Hi everyone, it's Logan. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope you like my graduation hat. I am a high school senior. I just graduated on Tuesday. Graduated, you know, COVID and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I'm also wearing my Festival of the Arts shirt and I don't know if you can tell from all the way back here, but I am wearing a kind of rainbow makeup look for Pride as I'm filming this on May 30th, which is close enough to me for Pride. Anyway, I am deciding to start a new series on my channel, and I'm going to be calling it Disney Plus or Minus, where I review um, films and television shows that are on Disney Plus. They don't have to be Disney Plus originals, but they have to be on Disney Plus. And the first film that I would like to discuss is Disney... The first one that I would like to discuss is Maleficent, what's it called? The second one, Mistress of Evil. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. It is the second film in the Maleficent series, which started the whole um, live action remakes in 2014, I believe it was. And the sequel came out in October of 2019, but I just got around to seeing it for the first time. And I'm going to be honest with you, I did not go into this movie having high expectations. I didn't like the first one very much. And so I really didn't go into this film having high expectations. I expected it to be boring and full of poorly shot action scenes. I was correct. <laughs> I did not like this movie. And I have four pages of notes in my on my Disney Aladdin VHS journal uh, explaining why I didn't like this film um, and a lot of it is it doesn't make sense it came out in the period of Disney films which you could argue is still going on today but I feel like less so at least in modern or at least in the Disney films Star Wars and Marvel and all that are different at least to me but you know Rise of Skywalkers for another day. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I came out in that time where they feel the need to have a twist. Uh, the twist is very bad and very predictable, as most Disney films are. Either they come out of left field or they are completely predictable from the very beginning. And this one is very predictable, so there will be spoilers. Uh, that being said, let's get started. So before, um, before I start on the second film, I'd like to just do a rundown of the plot of the first film, just to kind of catch you up to speed, because this movie is very similar to Frozen 2 in the fact that they try to expand the lore of this world that we're watching films in. And so let me explain to you a little bit from the first film. This is just the plot synopsis that I um, kind of cut down to the most basic and important parts from Wikipedia. Okay, so at the beginning of the film, uh, Maleficent lives in a magical world. I don't remember what it's called. Give me a second. I can't find it in my notes, but we'll discuss it later probably, and I'm pretty sure I wrote it down somewhere, but anyway. She lives in this magical world um, called, hmm, I guess I didn't write it down. Maybe I'll see it in my notes and I just didn't realize. Anyway, she lives in this magical world full of fairy people, and they don't make it clear if she is like the ruler of this group of fairies and and all these fairies are like different species I guess because there's the fairies like Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether who have different names in this universe. I can't be bothered to learn them. They're Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. Um, then there's these like tree people and I refer to them in my notes as Ripoff Groot. I don't believe that they have names. Um, but yeah, Ripoff Groot. <laughs> um, there's all sorts of different kinds of fairies. There's like these hedgehog people. Anyway, she is the 
she lives there and uh a boy from a neighboring kingdom uh visits this fairy people kingdom and i don't remember why um but he's there and he and Malefic this boy's name is stefan and he and maleficent fall in love he and maleficent fall in love and he promises to kiss her um because it's love is the most passionate thing or something it's very disney <laughs> like love is the most important thing that you could give someone like true love's kiss is the most precious gift and i feel like they only say that to give the emphasis of true love's kiss for later on in the film so stefan promises to kiss her but then he doesn't because his ambition is more important to him than love um oh moors is what it's called the 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 kingdom that Maleficent is from is called the Moors. Um, and in the war, there's a battle between this neighboring kingdom that Stefan is from and the Moors, and um, Maleficent ends up wounding King Henry, who is the king of this neighboring kingdom, and he says that whoever kills Maleficent gets to be king. Keep in mind, this is all in like the first 10 minutes of the first film. So he says that whoever kills Maleficent gets to be king. And Stefan, having a very high ambition, that being more important to him than love, um, decides that he wants to be the king. And so he's going to go and kill Maleficent, even though he fell in love with her. Well, she fell in love with him. Now, um, something that's important to the story is the fact that um, fairies are allergic, I guess, to iron. They are sensitive to it. It burns them. And so Stefan um, cuts off Maleficent's wings because he doesn't want to kill her because he still loves her. So he, ta he cuts off her wings and he takes them to the king and he becomes the king because he believes that Maleficent is dead. So Stefan becomes the king. Okay, then, um, then he has a baby girl, uh, Princess Aurora, and, um, the traditional Sleeping Beauty story kind of begins, you know, the three fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather, give her gifts, and, um, Maleficent is mad that she wasn't invited, you know, since Stefan was her true love, and, She's mad that Aurora isn't her baby and all this stuff. She's mad that she wasn't invited. She puts a curse on uh, Aurora and Stefan um, gets very angry, which I mean, to be fair, this crazy fairy person put a curse on his daughter and he sends her to live with Flora, Fa Fauna and Meriwether. Maleficent um, watches Aurora to make sure that the curse goes through and all this stuff it ends up realizing oh she's a cute kid and I didn't I don't want her to be cursed anymore you know I don't want her to be cursed anymore I love her whatever so um and she kind of becomes a mother figure to Aurora but then now we're getting into the actual plot of the movie. Most of the movie is her just watching. Aurora! Um, but Aurora finds out that Maleficent's the one that put the curse on her in the first place, and she runs away back to the kingdom where Stefan lives, where she's from, um, and she, um, pricks her finger, obviously, and falls into a curse, even though Maleficent tried to reverse the spell, um, it didn't work because it's too powerful and all this stuff. So she kidnaps Prince Philip, who's barely in the movie. She kidnaps Prince Philip and takes him to Aurora to kiss her because he's a prince and she's a princess and they're probably gonna fall in love and all this stuff. Um, so they kiss and that happens. Now, Prince Philip is the 
prince of another neighboring kingdom who is the main focus in the first or in the second film. Don't ask me what happened to all the people from Stefan's kingdom. It's never explained. We'll we'll get to what happens to Stefan. Anyway, so um Prince Philip kisses her, but it doesn't work because she's not he's not her true love. Maleficent is. Maleficent is like her mother figure. She loves her so much and all this stuff. They kiss, or Maleficent kisses her on the forehead. She wakes up, there's a big battle, um, and Maleficent drops King Stefan off of a cliff. Aurora is fine with this, even though Maleficent killed her biological father, and Aurora goes on to become uh, Queen of the Moors, which is where the first film ends and the second film begins which is where we will start my four pages of notes this is a long one folks so like get ready so the film starts um with these men who are going to collect uh some flowers and these flowers are magical um they kind of remind me of the sun drop from tangled in terms of visual but they're like the opposite of the sun drop and not like the moonstone, but um, so they go and collect these flowers and drop them off at the castle where um, a evil scientist is um, using them to experiment on some fairies that have been kidnapped from the moors. Fairies are going missing, no one knows where they're going, but they have been kidnapped by this scientist who, um, they've been kidnapped by this scientist, excuse me, who lives in Prince Philip's castle. Okay. At the beginning of the movie, there's also a lot of mumbling and it's really kind of hard to tell what's going on until much later. Um, okay. So, so then we go to the Moors and it is explained that even though there was a happy ending in the last film, at least for the audience, you know, Maleficent and her daughter kind of come together and everything seems great, but the people still hate her because they, she killed their king. Now, it's kind of hard to understand if Prince Philip is the new kind of royal family coming in to replace Stefan, or because I don't think so, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, what happened to Stefan's people? Did they go to the kingdom that Philip is from? It's hard to understand because there's one line where the queen um, talks about how she, um, how Aurora has a castle that's not in the Moors, the castle that was, um, you know, passed on to her when Stefan died, but it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. That's what I'm going to tell you. It doesn't make any sense as to whether Stefan's people moved to the neighboring kingdom or what happened to them. It's never explained, but anyway. But that's not important to the story, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, so everyone still hates Maleficent. Um, which makes sense. I mean, even if it's the neighboring kingdom, she still killed people. She killed the king, she killed innocent people in the last film who are just in the war. And they're upset about that. Fair enough. So, <laughs> in my notes, I put, in my notes, I put, this is going to be dumb, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, there's this one character. What is his name? It starts with a P. What is his name? Give me a second. Give me a second. Pinto. His name is Pinto. He's one of those like hedgehog people that I was talking about. 
And he and Flora Fauna and Merryweather tell Aurora that there's something important that she has to go and see, even though she needs to worry about where the missing fairies are going to. Like, where have they gone? But um, they take her to this secluded um, area in which Prince Philip is there. And he proposes to her. Now, obviously, this film takes place some odd time after the first film, but it doesn't explain how much. It's not like Frozen 2, where it's like, okay, um, this film takes place six years after the first one, you know? It doesn't say how much time has taken place. So, I don't know why Philip has fallen in love with her if they were not meant to be together in the first film. It, again, a lot of this movie kind of retcons the first one and also just doesn't make a lot of sense. So, um, Philip proposes, and yes, I wrote in my notes, the whole point of the first film was that familial love was more important. So why is Philip proposing if they're not true love? Anyway, um... So everyone's mad at everyone's mad at Maleficent, but the film acts like everyone's wrong to be mad at Maleficent. Like, why are you mad at her? There was a happy ending at the end of the last movie, but again, she killed a king. She killed a ruler. That's like not good, especially in the eyes of the people who were being ruled by Stefan. So everyone's mad at her, but the film acts like they're not supposed to be. Um, so the queen and the king and the queen of um prince philip's kingdom decide that they want to have aurora and maleficent over for dinner and um I, obviously this is a bad idea and i wrote in my notes what did i write in my notes calling it now they're gonna try and kill maleficent yes <laughs> So they have them over for dinner. Um, this movie's about racism, as many modern Disney films tend to be. Um, they they give her iron utensils to eat with. As I mentioned, iron is bad for fairies. They give her iron utensils to eat with. They expect her to eat with her hands. You know, they use a lot of um, negative language towards her they're very racist but the well the queen is the king wants peace and in case you haven't figured it out already just by the fact that i said the queen is racist guess what she's the twist bad guy um it's so obvious it's so obvious because while they're having dinner the queen keeps pushing all these negative things about Maleficent to kind of get Aurora to join their side and start a war on the Moors because she's racist and um she later on it's explained that she has the spinning wheel in the scientist's lab which we'll like get to um that she has the wheel in the scientist's lab and um she used it it's still got the curse in it even though the curse is only meant for aurora but she uses the curse to poison the king you know with the whole true love's kiss thing she doesn't love him um but she tries to blame maleficent for killing the king because while she's she gets angry and uses magic and so she blames Maleficent for killing, attempting to kill the king. Ooh, thunder. Anyway, she, um... <laughs> First of all, in my notes I wrote, is this another racism movie? This is a racism movie. <laughs> um... Let's see. So there's this redheaded lady, I don't even know if she has a name, but Maleficent flees the dinner after the king um, passes out. Um, and while she's flying, this redhead lady shoots her with an iron arrow. 
hoping that it'll hit her and she will die. Especially because there's an ocean for some reason. Don't know where the ocean came from. Don't know where they are. Because it's hard, I guess it might be a river or something. Anyway, because there's this magical bridge later on that bridges the moors and this kingdom. It's very confusing. Anyway, Maleficent falls into the water and begins to drown. Um, but another fairy, just like her, you know, with the wings and the horns, saves her and brings her to this magical place. Hmm. Called Tumul? Tumul? Tumel? I don't remember. I wrote it in my notes. And, um, all the fairies there are just like her. And they say that they used to live all over the world, but then racism pushed them into one corner of the world. Um, this one tiny space, Tumul, Tumel, we're gonna call it Tumul. I don't remember if that's actually how it's pronounced. Um, they push, they all get pushed into this one corner of the world because of racism and they all have to live in solitude. Nobody knows that they exist. How did Maleficent get away from them? Why did she not live with them in the first place? Not explained. But the guy who tells them, but the guy who tells her all about this is a black guy. And guess what? Yes, he is the first to die. Uh, but it is kind of a cool set. It's the only set in the film that looks like it wasn't filmed at like Disney World. Like a lot of the film looks cheap. And I'm not saying that Disney World looks cheap. Disney World looks really great, but it looks like it was filmed in Disney World. It doesn't look good. But the, the Solitude set, Tumul, 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 looks good. It, it's a nice set. Um, so I wrote 45 minutes in and I'm bored. And this is where I kind of started to fade off a little bit. Um, but I still kind of got the basics. Anyway, I wrote, how did she not know about her people? Why wasn't she with them to start? Exactly. <laughs> so then, um, Pinto goes to find Aurora, uh, from the fairy kingdom because more, fa more and more fairies are going missing. But then we realize Pinto gets kidnapped by the scientist. And we find out that the sundrop kind of flower has this magical ability when mixed with other stuff. Um, when mixed with other stuff to kill fairies and turn them into plants. Um, and that's what the queen wants. She wants to kill fairies. She does not like them. Um, Okay, then there's the wedding, but the queen doesn't want any of the fairies at the wedding, even though, um, well, at first she doesn't want any of the fairies at the wedding because, you know, she's racist and she wants it, Aurora to, like, kind of forget about them. But, like, I don't, what I don't understand is why she didn't want Florifon and Meriwether to be there, considering... They were friends of Stefan, and Aurora lived with them her entire life, and all that kind of stuff, which... Anyway. Um... Okay. So, the... There's this point in the movie, and this... This movie actually has a lot of similarities to The Last... To the Rise of Skywalker, with the whole Jedi healing thing and everything, but, um... So then the wedding happens, and the wedding is the majority of the film, actually. Um, the queen wants all of the fairies to come after all so she can kill them with this special flower potion thing that they made that's going to kill all of them. So she invites them all to the wedding, and they all come over on this magical bridge, and everybody's so excited to see Aurora get married. And... Um, 
there's this big scene where Aurora gets locked in her room because the wedding's not actually gonna happen and because she use she gets like called down by the spinning by the spindle even though the curse like already happened but the curse is still in it oh I don't fucking know um but she escapes and all this big action scene happens um the queen is revealed to be the bad guy and we see that the black guy gets killed i don't even remember his name he's like barely in it he's literally the exposition fairy and he's literally a fairy so he's really the exposition fairy but um he like gives some of his magic to maleficent to go and fight all the fairies and all the fairies are locked in the cathedral where the wedding is happening and the red-headed lady that tried to kill maleficent earlier has put the potion inside of the pipe organ so when she pushes a key on the pipe organ um the potion comes out of the pipes and attacks all the fairies and kills a whole bunch of them but um meriwether stuffs herself into the pipes so when she dies and becomes plants she fills up all of the pipes and the potion can't come out anymore um there's also one line before when they're outside where uh fauna is like oh this is good rice and flora is like you're not supposed to eat the rice you're supposed to throw it at the bride and groom she's like why are we wasting good rice like why is she eating uncooked rice that didn't make that never made sense to me um so the twist was revealed because of the spindle um so the whole reason that the queen and i'm sorry if this doesn't make a lot of sense my notes are kind of all over the place but so is this film so you know what good um so the she has poor motives um so when the queen was a child her father really wanted to make peace between her kingdom and the moors and she didn't like that because they were starving people you know um her kingdom was very poor they didn't have lot any food or they were suffering so she just wanted to go and steal from the fairies but the king was like no we're not gonna steal let's make peace she and she's mad that her father wouldn't let her steal from the fairies now she wants to kill all the fairies yeah that's that's her motive um i wrote the war is boring <laughs> i also wrote for a film called maleficent she's barely in this movie she really is she's maybe in like 30 minutes of the two hour runtime it's mostly about aurora and her dealing with the wedding and the queen and all that stuff i also put that the, the prince can't be that oblivious because it's so obvious that the queen is the bad guy and she like there's literally this part at the beginning of the movie after the dinner scene it's not the beginning of the movie but after the dinner scene when maleficent's flying away the prince is like oh my god well if true love, if it's the same curse that she put on sleeping beauty how would he know that but whatever you can kiss father and he'll wake up but obviously she doesn't love him they're not true love um because she doesn't give a fuck because he because the king her husband also wants to make peace with the moors she doesn't like that because you know racism and so she decides so she's like good night forever or some stupid shit like that and like nobody notices that she says it like she's right there everyone's right there and nobody notices that she says it um anyway um so maleficent dies in this film in the whole big war scene there's a whole the, the war goes on for so long and it's just poorly shot action scenes and it's boring um anyway maleficent dies and she becomes 
plants. But then she comes back to life because the black guy gave her his healing when he died. It doesn't make sense. Like, he, like when he dies, he's like lying there and he just like gives his hand to Maleficent. Maleficent takes it and there's this like whole like glow around them. And I guess when she dies, she gets a second chance at life because she has the black guy's life in her or something. I, I don't know. Um... I wrote is love bringing her back to life because when she dies like Aurora's like screaming and crying and all this shit and so I'm like is love bringing her back to life is it like a tangled situation where when Rapunzel's tears fall down Flynn comes back to life but it makes sense in Tangled because she has the powers um but Aurora doesn't have any powers so that didn't make sense um the queen in a I guess it was supposed to be ironic in comparison to the first film when Maleficent throws the queen, throws King Stefan off of the building um, and he dies. The queen throws Aurora off of the building in this film and tries to kill her. Um, don't ask me why. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> why, I don't know why she tried to kill Aurora. I mean, I do because Aurora has like wants to protect them more she's the queen of them so she throws aurora off of the cliff Ooh, excuse me she throws aurora off the cliff maleficent saves her with her wings and all this shit um and then i wrote in my notes after fighting a war against humans she forgives the prince like maleficent doesn't want aurora to marry prince philip because he's a human and she doesn't trust humans and then she fights this whole big war against the queen and humans and then she's like okay i guess you can marry the prince now i wrote they ended racism <laughs> groot dropped um the queen off of the building she died or she didn't die she became a goat because there's a reference earlier on where maleficent's like oh i'm gonna turn the prince into a goat so you can't marry him she doesn't but uh and then maleficent turns the queen into a goat as an act of haha remember that from earlier in the movie and the ending goes on for so so long like the war goes on for so long but then like the conclusion goes on for so long it's like okay the war's over we ended racism you know everybody wins humans and fairies can live together in peace and the moors and prince philip's kingdom will come together and everything will be great that goes on for like the last 15 minutes of the movie just that everything is good now boring and it goes on for lo so long and then my last thing I wrote in my notes before the movie ended was it's still going but yeah this is a bad movie guys it's ugly oh I also forgot to mention that the um the scientist gets a redemption arc because um Aurora knows that he's a fairy for some reason he's a gnome and she's like, you gotta set these fairies free. And he's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll do it. And that's it. Um, why he's why the queen is allowing him to live in the castle in the first place if he's a fairy type? I don't know. None of this movie makes sense. And obviously it's going to get a minus from me. If you want to watch this movie, or if you've seen this movie and you have any opinions on it, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. I Let me know if you like this series and if you want to see me do more videos like this. I really liked taking notes and reviewing a film. Um, yeah, just let me know. Maybe I can do something a little bit more scripted. Let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good life. Be safe out there. Catch you on the flip side.